And uh, we had get a questionnaire how uh, we uh, criticize on the current uh, ECI. Yeah. And we have answered these things and uh, my question is now how these answers will be come in the process for an improved uh, ECI 2015. I really appreciate your work on uh, direct democracy and the European initiative, but uh, you said also that uh, the core question is democracy and basic income, uh, well, is maybe the second priority. Well, I would like to argue that uh, we are actually afraid of frustrated, hungry uh, people who mm. do democracy. I mean, we have to have first empowered people to do the right and logical and rational decisions. So, I'm sorry. So, uh, one of the problems uh, with uh, the European Citizens Initiative compared, for example, to the Swiss initiatives is the lack of bite, the fact that it doesn't have uh, many uh, consequences apart from this nice reply, more or less nice reply from the Commission and a hearing at the Parliament. So, in your view, what's the best way of giving it more bite without probably going all the way to the Swiss uh, formula? Uh, whether Europe can achieve uh, un un unconditional basic income on its own or should it uh, spread this message uh, globally that uh, to, <coughs> to achieve it in other places as well because uh, we, if we achieve it here then maybe we will attract uh, more migration. What is your opinion about that? So there is uh, this questionnaire by the Ombudsman and it's good uh, when you rep or have replied to that. The Ombudsman is very much interested in putting this on the agenda and, it, and I have had a personal meeting with the Ombudsman, actually it's the Ombudswoman, Emily O'Reilly, on that and she's a very devoted person, tw devoted towards citizen rights and democracy and she wants to help uh, she will publish uh, her report, uh, I don't know when, so uh, uh, I asked her whether she would publish it before the elections and she said she cannot be sure on that, so I can't tell you the exact date now. Uh, anyway, it will be helpful, absolutely, I'm sure, it will be a good report, but I think it's more helpful or more important now is the report done by the parliament because this, uh, you know, the, the, the decision to do that was taken by the whole parliament and I know the report, I have it here and it contains all the important issues and on every issue I would say it, it, uh, it's on our side. So it makes very, very good proposal. I myself had a long list of what needs to be changed uh, already. So I met with them, I, I mentioned all these things. They collected some additional points and this is now an official study by the parliament and uh, that's very hopeful, uh, very, very important. And the other thing is that uh, we need to have uh, colleagues that, that fight on that in the end. It will not be the Ombudsman, it will not be the, the Parliament, the question will be whether the Council will be more open on that or not, because I have to admit, for example, in the last negotiations, in the end it was uh, the government of Italy and of Romania that said, uh, this is already too citizen friendly and uh, we veto <laughs> the whole thing. So sometimes it's not funny to, to negotiate with the Council, those are people who are not really interested in citizens uh, speaking up and, and involving into politics. And this will be the crucial question and therefore it's necessary, I look at you because Austria plays an important role in that, it's necessary also to push on the national governments to change their positions in the Council. Austria has not always been supportive, although in Austria the NGOs, the civil society is very supportive on that. How to finance a basic income? This is a huge chapter. I, I will very briefly and more in a general uh, uh, position tell you my long-term vision. I think that, uh, first of all, for me it's a question, the, the unconditional basic income is a question of human rights for everybody. And uh, I see it uh, mostly as a question that needs to be financed by taxes. 
by a shift in taxes, I also see a need in our societies to talk about the development of incomes and wages, and especially uh, of incomes that come not out of work, but uh, where people say, my money works for me, or something like that, uh, so that are in a, vent, in a way rents, uh, or is, is that the right English term? Rents. rents. And I do not talk only about rents, uh, that where you have invested money and without doing anything you just get more every day. I'm also talking about rents on um, on the scheiße in English. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it on 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 property on on uh, real estate is the English yes, term yes, real sorry. estate. Uh, strange word for Boden. Okay, <laughs> real estate. I'm talking about uh, what is under the ground. Uh, most of the wars in the last decades you can understood, understand best if you understand uh, the access to raw material, to oil and so on as the important driving force on that. And I find it completely strange that things that are under the earth that have been growing there for millions and millions of years belong one person or one strange regime. I think we have to think about this whole and by thinking about this whole and creating or socializing the profit that uh, are made by these things, we can have a wonderful basic income for, for many of us. But I will explain this more details in another lecture when we have more time for that, but only to bring in, in a new thought in the debate. Then, uh, yes, uh, sorry, I think this was slightly a misunderstanding. I, I did not say that uh, democracy is more important than the un unconditional basic income. For me, it's like two pillars for, for a free society. Uh, you don't like it. Uh, I don't mind. For me, both is of utmost importance. And we have to go for both. It would make no sense to say, and that was where I thought you would have misunderstood me, if you would have thought that I say, let's first for let's say 20 years fight on democracy and then we can start fighting on the UBI. That would be absolutely crazy. We have to fight for both and I can't predict what we will achieve early and also I predict that never we will have full success. It will sometimes go step by step. So in democracy, certainly it goes step by step. Democracy is never finished. People change, society changes. You can always improve democracy. You also can always improve if you haven't UBI, you can still improve it, and it's not first one, then the other, it belongs together. Uh, what I said about democracy was only that, it, for me, it's very important to look at who takes the decisions. This is the real power question, that's why I uh, put some emphasis on that. Um, ECI, lack of bites, yes, that's, up to, where, where are you, yeah, that's absolutely right, and <laughs> Uh, there the problem is that we are limited by the wording of the Lisbon Treaty, which was not our proposal, it was changed in the presidency or the bureau of the convention because uh, the text that we brought into the convention was a stronger one. Uh, I, would, uh, I think we need two things, one is that uh, the commission is not invited, the commission has the task to make a proposal on the basis of a basic income, so to, to, to draw a law uh, text, a bill, a law proposal. And the other thing is that I need, uh, I think that ECI uh, needs to be possible also on the treaties themselves and on treaty changes. I find the idea that you limit this to, as it is said in the treaty, uh, issues for the implementation of the treaty rather curious, rather, rather strange, because this binds uh, you always to the past, but things like the ECI are mostly instruments for the future, for creating new ideas, and mostly the new ideas are not in the treaties, because <laughs> otherwise they would have had this idea 40 years ago. So you bring in a new idea and then they say, okay, you're not allowed, because this is not for the implementation of the treaty, which is completely crazy. You, you, you bind a society to its own past. So this is the two important things that we need to change. Uh, last point, uh, ah yes, and then uh, I would add that uh, 
we not only should change this, but I think that also on the European level, in a longer perspective, we need initiative and referendum. So if we have an ECI, the Commission then needs to, to draw a text and so on, then legislation starts, but in the end the outcome is not sufficient for the initiators, then the initiators must have the right to say, okay, we put our uh, primary, our previous text, sorry, and let's have a referendum on that. So let has, let's citizens vote on that. Last point, UBI world. Yes, this was the question also on, on migration and so on. Uh, I think that on the, uh, on the first step, you, you cannot completely overcome that problem. So if, if we would say we can introduce an UBI only if it's worldwide, then we will never get it. Uh, we would have to wait for the last, and the last will be very late. So uh, we have to start with that, and I think uh, we need uh, legislation that makes clear who has access and who not. Uh, but I cannot solve that problem. I mean, you're absolutely right that it would be good to have the UBI worldwide and it's absolutely uh, wonderful that we have initiatives in Japan, in other Asian countries, in Africa, Africa and so on. Uh, but uh, I think the concept, it should first be worldwide, otherwise it won't work, would be a wrong concept. We need to implement um, in a way uh, fences or in a way uh, 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 rules that make sure that it can work in, in parts of the world. But this is very uh, general, but I already took a lot of time and don't want uh, Werner and others to... I, I don't know precisely about your plan, but thanks for the question. I hope the answers could, could uh, help you somehow.